Hey everybody, Patton here. Welcome back to the channel. So, had a lot of requests on how to get Dreamcast games to run, so that's what we're looking at today. But before we get started, I just need to let you know that this is not a very good way to seriously play Dreamcast games. The hardware in these systems just isn't right for these type of games. You will get some games to run, and you'll get some games to run really well. I'll explain a little bit of that once we get into the game portion of this video. So let's get started. First thing is you need to hack your system. I will have a video tutorial in my description for you to follow to do that. So after you've hacked your system, we're going to open up HackGCE. We're going to install the module. You can go to the modules tab and into the HackG mod store. Click on the RetroArch tab and you're going to download the newest version of RetroArch Neo. Just hit the download module button right here. It'll download that to your HackG program. Next, click on the RetroArc Cores tab. What you want is the Raycast emulator. Once again, just hit the download module button right here. It'll put that in HackG for you. Once you're done with that, you can exit out of the mod store. An alternative way is to get the cores from the KMDF core set, which is hosted on HackG.net. I'll have the links in my description for you to download those cores. All you have to do with those HMODs, just drag them right into HackG itself, and it'll be added that way. Then you're gonna go to your modules tab and install extra modules. For this video, I'm using the KMFD set. So what you wanna do is put a check mark next to Raycast, and then if you're going to use his RetroArc, once again, his RetroArc Core. If you're going with the mod store, you'd put a check mark next to RetroArc Neo and then Raycast down here. You hit the OK button, a bar will appear on your screen. Once it's filled in all the way, it means these cores are installed to your system and they are ready to be used. This core does need BIOS files to run. They're done the same way as normal BIOS files, except for one extra step. You have to create a folder. So let's go over that real quick. So using your choice of your FTP program, you're going to go into the following folders. You want ETC, then Libretro, System, and this is where you would normally put your BIOS files. What you need to do is create a folder in here, lowercase dc. Open up that folder, and there are two files you need. You need the dc underscore flash dot bin and dc underscore BIOS dot bin. You'll see here one is 128 kilobytes and the other is two megabytes. So when you go searching for these BIOS files, make sure you have the correct size. So once your BIOS files are in place and the cores were installed, now we have to add the games. So the game types you can use with this are .cdi files or .gdi files. From my testing, it doesn't matter which one you use. I haven't noticed a difference. You're going to go to the add more games button down here. You're going to navigate to wherever you keep your Dreamcast files. We're going to try Crazy Taxi and a couple other ones. So you see here it just says crazytaxi.cdi. All you do is hit this open button and it'll be added to HackG. So I've already gone ahead and added a few games. Like I said, we have Crazy Taxi, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Since these are disc based games, you want to make sure that this compress box is not checked. You cannot compress these files. The command line for these games, as you can see here, is slash bin slash dc. I believe you can also use slash bin slash raycast, just like it's spelled in the core. One extra step you need for Dreamcast games to be able to save them, you need this VMU image. I call it an image because it is also a CDI file. That will also be in my description for you to download from HackG.net. So take a look at the sizes of the games here. 691 megabytes, 721. You know, these are very large games, so you will need expanded storage. So we have everything in place here. The next step is to hit synchronize if you're using internal storage or the export games button if you're using a flash drive to move these games from your PC to your classic system. And then that's it. So got a couple more things to show you. We're going to do that over on our SNES Classic. All right, here we are. Something I forgot to mention about this VMU. It is added just like any other game. You have to change the command line to match all your other Dreamcast games. So it would be slash bin slash DC. So first step is to go into this VMU. Anytime you start a Dreamcast game, you're going to have to set the date and time every single time. You'll see in the bottom left, I have the FPS counter that is to show you how well these games are playing so we have to set up the memory cards before you start playing if you want to save your game so you're going to go into the file right here you'll see I've set two up already when you first start this up all four of these are going to have these red X's on them what you need to do is just go into one with a red X hit the delete all option then hit yes 
Then you can select a face and a uh, background color if you choose. Hit yes again, it'll delete all. It'll tell you all files were deleted. If you back up, now we have three memory cards we can use. So now we're going to back out and test some of these games. So we're going to start with a 3D game, Crazy Taxi. So like I said before, 3D games do not run great. Um, some of them run okay. Crazy Taxi is, I, I could probably play it, um, but it's got a lot of issues. We'll, we'll see in a second. nice intro also i am playing these games on my flash drive and it is a very slow read speed see here we have to go through and change the date again um, but like i was saying it's a very low um, read speed and when you have a flash drive like that you'll get those skips like you saw with the dreamcast intro um, just a quick skip every now and then so with a better flash drive you'll get better performance Hey, 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 it's time to make some crazy money. Are you ready? Here we go. All right, starting off good. Let's grab this girl. He needs to go to the cable car stop top. All right, so take a listen. Sound has a little bit of issues. Obviously not running anywhere close to full speed. So basically that that was good for a 3D game. I've tried some other ones um, that were terrible. They played horribly. Okay, let's move on to Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Are you ready? Go. That's Street Fighter 3. It's this is a in, in my opinion is it's playable. Not full speed, but I'm not such a huge fan of the game that I would really notice. You see some pausing every now and then. Once again, that could be because of the flash drive I'm using, or it could just be because, you know, the, the system's struggling to get this game to run. There we go, let's see. Alright, super combo finish. So besides some skipping every now and then, I'm Street Fighter 3, not too bad. And what we've all been waiting for, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Alright, let's select a couple characters. I like Wolverine. No Ken. I guess we can sell for Ryu. Uh, how about Iceman? He's alright. Looks like we're fighting Hayato from Star Gladiator. Alright. So not too bad. There's noticeable slowdown. Um, background isn't exactly looking the way it's supposed to. Still not bad. I mean, I didn't even notice the background at first, but the game is definitely playable. I feel like I, I wouldn't mind regularly playing this against, you know, a friend or something like that. Alright, we won! So there you have it. For the most part, you're going to want to stick to 2D games. So a lot of the fighting games that were on this system are pretty playable for the most part. Some 3D games are pretty good. Um, in testing, I've found most of them don't run very well at all. This may be even worse than the N64 emulator, if we're being honest. But again, many, many people wanted to play Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and now you have a way to do it. It's not perfect. Um, I don't know if there's going to be any other way to do it, but there you go. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.